All right, so today we will talk about the concept behind virtual memory, right? Uh, and, and this has to go back to the memory from the programmer view, right? What do we want in a memory? From the pro programmer point of view, uh, aside from like really fast memory, uh, which kind of govern uh, topics like caching, right? From the programmer, you want to see the abstraction of the memory where, right? The memory should be unlimited, or at least potentially becomes unlimited, right? And it should be contiguous. Contiguous means that let's say you declare that I want an array from zero to 9,999, right? 1,000 elements in your array. You want to make sure that A of zero is next to A of one and is next to A of two. It should be contiguous, right? It should be contiguous. If that's not the case, think about what would happen if you have multiple programs that are running, right? Microsoft Word, Dota 2, YouTube, Chrome, uh, and on the background, you have Spotify uh, playing some music. And in the meantime, on Stack Overflow, trying to figure out what's the loose, what, how should I approach my homework, right? Work and play and uh, doing the assignment all at the same time. With that, you have multiple programs running concurrently, right? Each one of these programs would perform malloc, right? Allocation, deallocation, allocation, deallocation all the time. Think about the case where someone has to come in and manage the memory, right? And someone have to come in and make sure that as a programmer, when you program these, these software, right? You don't have to worry about who else are running. Right? You never have to worry about that. The worst case that can happen is sex fault, right? I mean, what's bad? Well, how, how bad can it be? You just debug the program because you use your pointer in the wrong way, right? But if you have the correct math method of using pointers, you're good. All right. The operating system, basically, as well as the hardware, OS and the hardware, would work together to give that illusion to you. But you need to you need to imagine that when you buy your computer, the main memory, right? The DRAM that you buy from a computer store, these are physical devices, right? It actually does have the physical location where you would access the data. So what exactly is virtual memory? Remember our concept of pointer. What is a pointer in C? What is store in a pointer? And someone tell me what gets stored. It's an address. It's an address to something, right? So how many people think that that's an address? That's the exact location in DRAM that I want to access. Can you rest your hand or thumbs up or do something? All right, there's a long pause of awkward. Uh, nothingness. <laughs> no, it's okay. So my my repeat the question, right? When you have a pointer, right? Do you think that's actually the number that represent the location in DRAM that you are accessing the data with, right? So many of you might have think that hey, that's a physical address, right? But the reality is, we actually benefit from the abstraction, right? So let me first ask, what does virtual mean? What does virtual mean? It's not real, right? It's, it's fake, it's uh, un, unreal kind of memory, but we use this all the time. And, and now I'm gonna go through more detail. So each address, right? As uh, CU suggested, which is awesome, right? You have the physical address, that tell the physical location of my data in DRAM. So that's the physical address. So that's the physical address, right? The physical address tell you where is my data in DRAM. But why do I care about virtual memory? The reason why I care is how many people have three instances of Microsoft Word open up and you're trying to work on like three uh, classes uh, assignments at the same time.
So when that happened, right, you have multiple processes, each one of them are running one instance of Microsoft Word, but you're opening three different files, right? Are you with me so far? Basically, it's three different files, three instances of this Microsoft Word, right? So each one of these process choose have its own view, right, of the memory address, right? Because the Microsoft Word that you're using to answer things for this class is going to be different from the solution or the, the, the assignments that you are basically working on for a different class. Right. These are the concept behind why do we need a virtual address? Because each process, each process, each instance of the program you are running should see their own their own view of the memory addresses. Right. These are called the virtual address. Basically, the pointer, the pointer that you have been using so far, the pointer, these are address in particular, pointer is the virtual address, the virtual address. So now let me go to the next question. If I tell you the pointer is a virtual address, how can I go to the location in DRAM to access the data? What is the missing part? So what do we need? Yeah, you, you need a way, right? You need a way to convert the virtual address. You want to convert that to a physical address. You want to have that mapping somehow, right? So the memory management unit, which is a part of both the computer system and the hardware, would work together to perform that conversion. It performs the conversion between virtual address into the physical address. So what are the benefits? The first benefit is if I have to deal with just the virtual address, I would just have the my own virtual space. I don't have to care about anything else running in the system right now. I don't have to care. I would just deal with my own pointer as long as I use it correctly. I will be fine. If I use it incorrectly, the OS would throw set fault saying, hey, that's an illegal access. Don't go there, right? So that's the first benefit. Each application see their own, own virtual space, right? See their own virtual space. It's like each application are in within their multiverse, uh, multiverse, right? You you see their own virtual world, and I don't care about whatever is going on in other application. Same concepts apply here. Each application see their own virtual space. You also get memory protection, right? You also get memory protection. What do I mean by that? How many of you here run into sec fault? already for assignment two. I, I'm sure all of you guys are running into SecFault already and you love it, right? Um, actually, you should love it because this is the way for the OS. This is the way for the OS to tell you, don't read that data, it doesn't belong to you. So let me ask you this. I mean, I can make sure the OS never throws SecFault at you. I can write my own OS and I have no way to check I will not throw a sec fault at you. What could have happened? I can crash. Well, first of all, you're not going to run into sec fault, but your code can crash your computer, for example, right? You can by accident modify some OS uh, data and crash the OS or crash the part that would handle where you deal with the, the display on the monitor. Uh, so your monitor would stop working, right? So this is what we call memory protection. It protects our illegal access, right? It protects our illegal access. This is like, think of it as like a law in a computer. Memory protection and virtual memory, like hold, withhold that rule, right? To make sure your computer run and make sure that everyone can do whatever they are designed to do and no one breaks the law. All right, so that's memory protection. The third benefit is 
you are going to have so this this third benefit you might have heard it before uh coding sound dangerous now well uh yes and no right the reason why you run into sex fault um unhandled exception like divided by zero those are designed to make sure that when you have incorrect code it tells you and it crashed the program rather than crash the computer and oh yes so that's a great analogy right so that's an analogy to say hey it's memory protection it's kind of like the permission that we give to the directory in our first few classes yes <clears throat> so what actually happened is when you run a program, right? When you run a program, we use the word virtual space here, right? So each program would have their own virtual space. Each program actually have their own virtual space ID. And then the OS would make sure that whatever you are trying to access it is the data owned by this same ID. So it has to match. It's like a permission check that you can go and check, hey, can I access the data? The OS can either say, yes, you can access the data, or no, that's not legal, go away, all right? The, uh, the, the one difference is the, the permission into the directory, right? It won't crash, I guess. It, it's not gonna crash your program, just say, hey, you can access them. But in this case, the OS would basically crash the program and throw a sex fault at you. But conceptually, it's, it's a way to maintain permission to access each piece of the data. So hopefully that, that clears things up. But great, great comment, great analogy, by the way. Uh, so yeah, so that's how you can gain this ability to protect your data. It sounds dangerous, but it's actually a great thing. It's actually it's a safety thing. It's a safety thing, right? So. The next benefit you might have seen earlier, or you might have heard about uh, when you read like a tech articles, right? Uh, one of the benefit is virtual memory would give you this notion of, and I can't go to the next, okay, here. You, you have the notion of unlimited memory, magic, right? So te technically this is limited, but there are ways to create the illusion, right? We use the concept behind the cache replacement policy we learned from Tuesday. If you have data that you're going to access often, you keep that in your DRAM. Anything that you haven't used in a long time, any file, uh, any data that you haven't used in a long time, you can kick that out, move that to hard drive. What's the benefit of that? If you somehow use memory allocation, that ended up using more than what your DRAM have, you can put those data into the hard drive. This area is called swap. Anyone seen this before? The swap space. So for those who've seen it before, it's actually a part of your hard drive. It's called, yes, exactly, it's called paging. You basically kick the data you haven't used in a while. The policy, the policy behind paging kind of follow the LIU policy we learned from Tuesday. It's called the clock page replacement policy. The fundamental concept behind it is kind of like the same, has the same goal with the LIU. It's a little bit different, but the goal is like, this one is not likely to be accessed again. I'm going to kick them out. So we page this out to the swap space. The swap space is a, a special area in your hard drive designed to have maintain that that data for you and you don't want to fill up a lot of swap space because these are slow these are really slow because your hard drive are really slow about i would say one hundred thousand times slower than your dram that's how slow the hard drive is so don't don't rely on the swap space right whenever your computer seems really slow check they check how much memory you have left. My bet is you are basically swapping a lot, right? So the third benefit, this is actually a big benefit back in the day when in 1990s and early 2000s is you are basically using the virtual address as a way to create this illusion of unlimited memory. Yeah, even SSD is really slow. 
right? Even if Z is like 1,000 X slower than you, actually it's more than 1,000 to be honest, right? You are looking between nanosecond, nanosecond and my, like hundreds of microseconds. So that's, that's the disparity between the, the, the time it takes to access the data. That's how much slower it is. Uh, in reality, when you have to page data in and out, there are certain optimization you can do. So it's, it's still order of magnitude worse. When I said order of magnitude, this is one of the terminology that you can compare the number. Order of magnitude means that it's more than 10 times. It can be like 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times worse, right? So that's the third benefit. But these days, these days, I still don't, I don't think this is like a big benefit. It's just, it's just make sure you don't crash your computer because you run out of memory, but it's going to basically make sure your computer is really slow, right? Uh, for the, so the, the um, MLC is like a totally different concept. So are you talking about multi-level cell in SSD? So that, that's a totally different concept. MLC has to do with how you maintain the number of bits in the, uh, of your data inside the SSD cell. Um, I'm trying to see, I don't want to explain it now because it would, it would take a while and it actually it actually has to do with like the property of the ssd uh but mlc basically means that instead of storing one bit of information per cell we are storing two to three to four depending on the, the technology um so it has nothing to do with with the mimic mimicry of the mlc because ssd use this technique anyway right so it's a different technology. That's how I should put it. It's not related, but it's definitely good to know. If you are curious about it, uh, let me know. We can spawn off like another side discussion on Discord for sure. Like these are these are awesome topics to 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 be aware of, right? But it's a little bit too advanced for the purpose of this class, so I don't want to like flood the ad additional information. But it's great discussion for sure. Great discussion. Uh, all right, so with me so far, quite a lot of benefits. So let's talk about how do we implement this? How do we do virtual memory, right? So the first concept I have to talk about is called a page. It's a new term, it's a new term. I would compare this to a cache block, right? In the cache, we maintain things in a cache block granularity. Basically your data is in the cache block. In DRAM, your data is in a page. Your data is in a page. Well, well, what is a page in real life? What is a page in real life? Yeah, it's like a, a, a an area in a book, right? So it's a, it's a piece of paper, right? That you can write things. You can put data in there, right? And it does have certain size, right? The size limit how much you can put in a page, right? So that's a page. You can put text in there. You can put writings in there. So that's your right. So an A4 paper, right? An A4 paper would be able to hold these many letters. In your DRAM, you basically section DRAM into multiple pages. Each page in CPU, each page is four kilobytes. Each page is four kilobytes. The reason why, uh, to be honest, this is empirical. Basically, they'll say, hey, what size should the page be? And it turns out four kilobytes is kind of like a perfect balance between not too big and not too small. All right. Depending on the hardware, sometimes we can change that. The GPU, for example, sometimes they use 64. Sometimes they use 16 kilobytes for a page. Uh, there's also Linux does support both four kilobytes and two megabytes for the page size as well. They have a lot to do with the trade-off between how much utilization, like how efficient can you store the data. We're not going to talk about that 
right now just assume that a page can have different size. The CPU by default is four kilobytes. All right. And a page is basically mapped somewhere in DRAM. A page is mapped somewhere in DRAM. The program, the program, like your pointer, like in star i, right? These are virtual address and it belongs to a virtual page. So over here, that may be where i is. It will be somewhere in this virtual page, all right? And the virtual page will map to the physical page in DRAM. So in act like in in reality in DRAM, right? This virtual page may be mapped here, right? So in this case, right, your virtual page mapped to that part of DRAM and the variable i is somewhere in that virtual uh the the some somewhere in that physical page so this is called the physical page all right so we said that the mmu the memory management unit uh handling the virtual address translation into the physical address right virtual address translation into a physical address I will compare this into uh, like a game of scavenger hunt. Anyone play that game before? The game called scavenger hunt? Basically it's a game where you have a clue, right? You start with a clue. The clue give you the location. Number one. So the clue number one give you location number one. Location number one would have clue number two, right? Which then give you the location number two. Which can give you the clue number three, which lead to location number three, right? Until you go to the end. Yeah, it's treasure hunting, right? So think of it this way. My address translation that the the uh, uh the way i translate virtual address to the physical address is a is a game of uh, treasure hunting i start with my virtual address the virtual address becomes the first clue it tells you the location number one parts of the virtual address with the location number one would give you the second clue that go to the location number two so on and so forth until you are at the physical address. So that's it. That's it. That's the analogy of how this works, right? Now let's actually look at how we implement it. We would rely on so the, the ability to give you the next clue and give you the next clue, we call this indirection. If you haven't seen this word before, we use this a lot in computer science. In computer science, indirection means that uh, you start with a location, then you search. The result of that search give you the next location, which then give you the next location. That's the indirection, right? So I told you that a physical address, right? A physical virtual page, basically, like a virtual page. Not going. Here. Okay, if a virtual page right maps to a physical page, it means that the physical location of my virtual page is going to be somewhere. It's going to be somewhere inside DRAM. So as I said, this is like a game of treasure hunting. I start with virtual address. Right, I start with virtual address. I use the virtual address as a clue to go to location one. Anyone want to take a guess where is that location one? In your computer. So where's the blank empty space that you can store a lot of data?
DRAM, right? I mean, hard disk is way bigger, but it's too slow for these purposes. Uh, so this is somewhere in DRAM, right? We call this, basically this location is a huge table. So what can I do with a table? What What is there in a table? So I can use virtual page number, right? So I have virtual page. And I want the physical page. So I can use the virtual page number of the ID of my virtual page to check into this table. So anyone wants to take a guess, what's the simplest thing I can do? What can I store in there to get my physical address? I use a virtual page number as a key. What should be the value I store in here? The address, right? I mean, you, you only need the physical page number. And I'll tell you why is that good enough. So basically you have the ability to put in the virtual page and you get the physical page out of this. And this whole huge table, we call this the page table. We call this the page table. It's a big table that store the page. Oh, yes, definitely. So there's a comment on the chat that isn't this time consuming? Yes, exactly. And that's the purpose of next lecture. We will talk about how we can architect the system and the memory hierarchy to make sure this process is fast, right? Because the benefit is clear. The benefit is clear. We need memory protection. We need to make sure we can uh, have unlimited and the notion of unlimited memory. But this process is slow. Great observation, right? So here is the structure of the page table. Again, we use indirection. The page table store the location of the physical page, right? Or if you have multiple locations, like multiple levels, you would then go to page table and then page table again, page table again. We will talk about this in a bit. Uh, so you can point to the location on the next level, the next table, right? The next table. When it points to the next next table, just think of the game of treasure hunting where the first location gives you the second clue, which gives you the second location, which gives you the third clue, which gives you the third location, right? Or you can go to the physical page. We call this the page table entry. Each row in the table is called a page table entry. So here's the structure, right? This whole thing is called the page table entry. And as I said, I have a pointer, right? In star i, this is my virtual address. So virtual address come in. I use it somehow. We, we're gonna talk about this really soon. I use it somehow. This thing spit out physical address. This thing will spit out physical address. And we will now talk about how can we do this, all right? The structure is this. You have the, the first part of the page table entry. This part right here, tell you the physical address. This part right here, tell whether you can access it or not. So when you run into sec fault, what can happen here? When you run into sec fault, what can happen here? And I'm sure everyone here run into sec fault, including my own program. I did happen to run and came across that countless number of times, to be honest. So if I have sec fault, right, it basically means that my status, the status part right here, right, the, the part right here, 
tell me that I cannot access that page. I cannot access that page. So when you have a sec fault, what usually happens? Why do you have the sec fault? Anyone remember when you have a sec fault, how do you fix it? And what happened? So what are the, some common uh, sec fault error that, that you created? How many people use something without malloc? Yeah, that's one thing for sure. You loop out of an array, right? You you go through and went beyond the, the, the scope of your array and you run into the sec fault, right? Basically, instead of a proper, right? Instead of a proper virtual address over here, when you loop out of an array, you go beyond the part that you own. Instead of the virtual address, you basically go with a fake virtual address, like a new virtual address that you did not own at all, right? So instead of maybe going to the first entry, this new virtual address somehow point you here. What happened? That particular entry, the status bit tells you that, hey, you do not belong here. Don't access it. The OS basically throws sex out at you, all right? So the status bit can be used to determine, we'll talk about this status bit in, in, uh, in about half an hour on what are the information in there, but it tells you whether you can access this particular page or not. So let's break down your virtual address. When you have int star i, what happened, right? So the lower bit, we call this the page offset. These would behave the same thing as the byte in block bit in the cache block. Anyone remember this particular byte in block, block bit? What do we use it for? From the lecture on Tuesday, what do we use this bit for? Yeah, tell you exactly which byte is your data, right? In the cache block. The same thing is for the page offset. It tells you, I have this four kilobyte page, which exact byte is my data? Which exact byte is my address pointing at? It represents the location of that address inside the page because the page is much bigger than the data size you are trying to access. Then the rest, the rest are the clue to where in the page table you're looking at. It used as an index to the page table. It used as an index to the page table. So if I want to compare, for example, to the uh, the caching lecture, compare this to the index bit. What do we use the index bit for in the cache? What do we use the index bit for in the cache? It tells you what set do you go to, right? So over here, let's say the page table structure is like this. I said, hey, my virtual address will be broken down into the page offset and the page table entry. That tells you the index bits that go into the page table. So let's say the PTE is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. What's this number in binary that, uh, what, what is the conversion back to decimal number? Fourteen, right? So this number is 14. So anyone want to take a guess what row are we accessing here? If that number is 14, so what row do I go to? I would go to row 14. Well, again, yeah, row 14, because it starts from zero. Don't, don't, don't think too much. If you want to go to row zero, right, you, you, your number will be zero. In this case, your number is 14, by the way. <laughs> Sorry. Your, your number is 14, you go to row number 14, right? You go to row number 14, which will give you PTE. 14. 
So for now, let's assume there's only one table, right? Let's assume there's only one table. PTE 14 would be some, some information. Can someone give me a random hex number for PTE 14? PTE 14 can be any address. Give me some number. All right, let's say PTE 14 is 0x0016, right? And someone can give, can someone give me uh, 12 bits? I mean, I guess three digit hexadecimal for page offset. Three digits. All right, zero to three. All right, so now we have the page offset. This is the physical page number. We call this a physical page number. So the way you get your physical address is basically you take the physical page number, you plug the page offset in. That's it. Basically, this is PPN append with the page offset. All right. It seems really simple here. It seems really simple here. And it is really simple. It is really conceptually, this is it. All right. With me so far, any confusion here so far? Any confusion here? Okay, so this is really simple, right? Uh, the real design in your computer, there might be optimization about the number of bits that go into each of the entry and things like that. So let's kind of dive into what would happen in X86, right? So in X86, this is what happened. Our example, which is nice, right? It's nice at the starting point. It used one level of the page table. In X86, how big is your, uh, I guess, if you look at your computer right now, how big is your memory? Sixteen gigabytes, right? So let's say you have a sixteen gigabyte computer. If your page is four kilobytes, and your size, the size of your memory is sixteen gigabytes. How, if you have only one page table, like one big table, how many entries do I have to maintain? How many entries do I have to maintain to actually cover the whole 16 gigabytes? Yeah, you do the division, right? And you get uh, 4 million, right? 4 million uh, entries? That's big. That's too big, right? So what happened in X86 is instead of one big giant table, instead of one big giant table, that was like the design back in the day. These days we have multiple level. It looks like a tree. The first table would point to the second level. The second level would point to the third level. The third level would point to the fourth level. Right. It, it looks like a tree. All the page table, the location of this page table are all in your DRAM. Are all in your DRAM. What does it mean? So if I want to maintain this tree, if I want to maintain this tree, how can I point to the next level? Can I use the, an address to represent the next level? Can I use a physical address to represent the next level? Or where is that level? Where is the next table? But everything here is in your DRAM, right? Everything here is in your DRAM. So when you implement this page table, each level would point to the next page. 
is each level will point to the next table, I mean the, the, the next level of the table. All right. In the Intel edX that you have, including the AMD chip, you have four level. You have four level in total. The root will point to the first level. And the virtual address, the virtual address is the clue to the first level. The first level will give you the clue for the second level. The second level will give you the clue to the third level. The third level will give you the clue to the last level, which then give you the clue to the physical address, right? So each table store the page table entry that behave like an information that give you the next level and where is that located. We call the process of getting from virtual address, from virtual address to level one, level two, level three, level four, to your physical address. We call this full process the page walk, the page walk. So from this scenario, right? If I have an address like in star I, and I want to access the data, how many times do I have to go to DRAM to get the value? How many times? If I tell you that the page table, everything here is stored in DRAM. So how many times do I have to go to the DRAM to access this variable I? Five, right? The first time right here, the second time right here, the third time right here, the fourth time right here, and now you have the address for I, so that's the fifth time. Is that kind of inefficient? Isn't this kind of bad? So, do you all agree that now your computer, like your computer should provide a design. It should have a way to minimize this. Minimize the number of page walk. So is this a good thing? You want to minimize it, right? So that's the goal of what we are gonna talk about next Tuesday. We will talk about how we can design around this. How can we architect your CPU so that you don't do the page walk that often, all right? Today, let's talk about the page walk. Let's talk about correctness first. How do we perform the page walk? And we are not gonna use this 64-bit version. We are not going to use the 64-bit version of X86 because I have no room to draw four level. I will stick with 32 bits. All right, I will stick with 32 bits. 32 bit X86. There was a chip that if you buy a computer in year 2000, 2001, those are 64-bit machines. Um, no, no, my bad. Those are 32-bit machines. All right, with a 32-bit machine X86, you have two level of the page table. You have two levels. Each page table would contain multiple entries, the same structure that I showed you earlier, the exact same structure. Each entry stored two things. The first is the pointer to the next page table, and then the status. If you go back to my earlier figure that said PTE and the status, the status represent things like, is my data right there? If I have six faults, you might access something that the present bit is zero. It means that there's no real data here, right? Can this happen? Anyone here use your pointer without malloc? Anyone here use your pointer and you forgot to malloc? Come on, admit it. I'm sure everyone did this before. This can be like used a pointer without malloc, right? So right now your pointer is pointing to somewhere that hasn't been allocated, so the data is not there. The present bit will tell you, hey, there's nothing here. Why are you trying to access this? All right. If your pointer accidentally points to 
the area that your code is in, right? For example, pointer accidentally points to some program's data. And you're trying to write something to the pointer, right? Then the read and write permission bit would trigger and say, this is read only data. You're not supposed to write to it. So set fault, have fun. All right. So these are the bits that tell you, can I access and can I perform these operations? This can be your pointer accidentally points to the OS data, right? Which is also dangerous. You don't want to read that. So the OS would protect you from reading it because it would tell you, is this the typical user's data or is this supervisor's data, which is the, the, the data that owns by the OS. There can be also information like this that use to determine what get kicked out to the hard drive. It used to track the frequency of the data access. So these are the status bits. It's the additional information that I can add in by design to maintain what goes into DRAM. Can I access that page? Can I access this page? Who owns these pages? All right. So here is how page walk work. So let's assume four kilobyte page size is basically a typical 32-bit edifice machine. 4K page size, two level of the page table. Can someone tell me if my page size is four kilobytes, how many bits do I need for the page offset? How many bits do I need for the page offset? So I need to be able to tell each individual bytes in the four kilobyte range. So how many bits do I need for that? 12, right? Thank you. So it's log two of 4K. It's log two of 4K. That's 12 bits. All right. Log two of 4K. So I need 12 bits for that. Now I start with 32 bits. I already or already used 12 bits. How many do I have left? 20, right? So I have 20 left. I have two levels. I have two levels. So one thing I can do is I can split. I can split between half and half. So how many bits? If I split this half and half, how many bits I use for the first level? 10, right? So I can use the first 10 bits for the first level, the next 10 bit for the second level. So can someone give me a 32 bit uh, hexadecimal number? All right, no one type anything else to do this dead beef. All right, so I'm going to convert this to binary, All right? D is, okay, I am regretting my decision. Uh, D is 1101, I think. E is 1110. A is what? Yeah, 10. 10 is this. B is one zero one one, E is one 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 zero one 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 zero, F is one 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 one. So we have thirty two bits number. All right. I said the last twelve bits is the page offset. So what is my page offset? Someone tell me what is the page offset. So this is my address. I do in star i and then i just happen to be zero x dead beef
So what's my page offset? The last 12, right? So this is my page offset. And then the next 10 bits, which is this part, this is index into the second level. This would be used to index into the first level. So let me now put in the real example, right? I'm a more full-blown example with the page table up on the slides, right? So I'm going to do the example now. Here again, this is your virtual address. Virtual address. So let's say the last, the page offset is EEF, right? But I'll, I'll change the top part a little bit. Otherwise, I cannot draw the, the diagram properly because it would take too much room. So the next set of bits is going to be uh, one, one, uh, so, sorry, zero, six. Let me address this. Zero, 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 one, zero, zero. So what is my address? What is my virtual address? Can someone tell me what's the virtual address here that I have? My virtual address from these bits, right, is basically zero X. I have zero, zero C, right? C is one, one, zero, zero. Zero three, yeah, no room, not enough room. Sorry, let me erase this. My virtual address is going to equal 0x0, 0, 0, 0, c, 0, uh, 4, e, e, f. So let's say this is my virtual address. This is basically my pointer. I do int star i, and i happen to have this value. Are we, are we all on the same page so far? Now, this is my address that I see in, in the C program. I print out the value of i, I get 0x00c04eef. Are we all on the same page so far? Yes, no. And now our goal, goal, we want the physical address. We want the physical address. We now have the virtual address. So let's do this step by step. All right. As I said, the first part would go into the first table. So what the value in the level one index bit? Three, right? So in this table, which row do I go to? Which row do you go to? The PTE3, right? You basically go right there, right to the third row. This part of the bits, if you read older textbook, they sometimes refer to this part as a page directory. And this part of the bits called the page table. With the 64 bit x86, we just use level one, two, three, and four because there are multiple levels. There's not enough names. So that's just. In case you read textbook and you see page directory and page table, basically it's the first 10 bit, the second 10 bits. All right. Let's say the first 10 bit is three, you then go to PTE3. What is there? PTE3, give me what? If this is a treasure hunting, it give me the clue to what? To level two, right? It would point, it would point to the table. It would basically point to the address that is right here. This is the beginning of the level two table. 
Are you all with me so far? Basically, PTE3 would give me, hey, that's, that's the next table. Go there. All right. Go there. That's where the next table is. So what should be our next step now that we are at the second table? What should be our next step? Oh, oh, that's a great question. So the question is, how does a PDE point to the next table again? So we can store the address. So let's say this is address A, right? Let's say this location is address A, PTE3 is basically will hold the value A. We'll hold that value. It tells you, hey, that's the address. All right. Is it more clear? Okay, so in reality, so I'm gonna talk a little bit deeper in case, right, in case you read the actual uh, manual about the 8632-bit version, the number of bits, the number of bits for the PTE3 is not the flat address, it's actually, you have to append zero toward the end because you know that the beginning is gonna be divisible by 4K. Because each table is 4K, so they're going to try to optimize how many bits you need for PT3. The gist of it is it tells you the address. Right? The gist of it is it's going to tell you the address of, of uh, P, uh, the, the next page table. All right, with me so far, everyone clear? All right, any question in the middle, like any confusion here, please let me know right now. Any confusion? So now that I'm on the second table, what should I do next? What can I do? What can I use to tell which role do I go to? Which role? If my address is this, which role am I going to? Can someone tell me which role? Just take it. Yes, row four. Exactly, you're correct, right? And now I'm basically leading you to that conclusion because, because you have the next level right here, right? And you know the number is four. You know that the number is four, right? So from that point, you can tell I'm going there, right? So now I'm at row number four. Am I at the end of my translation process? Is that the last table that I have to go to? Is that the last table that I have to go to? I mean, I said I have two levels of the table and I'm on the second level already. So am I, am I almost done? Am I almost done? Yes, we are almost done, right? So, can someone give me the value of PTE4? Can someone give me the value of PTE4 in hexadecimal? It can be any number, uh, anything, to be honest. Throw me some random number for PTE4. All right, too, too long, too long. Okay, that beef is too long. Let's just do beef, right? Let's just do beef. Let's say PTE4 starts 0x, B, E, E, F. Let's just say 0x, B, E, E, F. Because if you do that beef, it's going to be more than 32 bits. Uh, so let's say PTE4 is 0x, B. Anyone want to take a guess what's my physical address? Physical address is basically PPN. Put that next to the page offset. This last level, this is my physical page number. All right, so yes, right? So from this point on, we know that the physical page number is 0, X, B, E, E, F. 
and my page offset is e e f how can i know that the page offset is right here right here this thing go down here all right so that's my physical address b b b e e f b e e f, B -E -E -F. I was trying to pronounce that and I fail. <laughs> okay, everyone with me so far, is it clear? How can we do this? Is it clear? Okay, so that's it. So, uh, so there's a question on the chat say, uh, is level one page, is that virtual address page? And level two page is a physical address page. Uh, it's not exactly that. The last level, the last level give you the physical page. So you are correct on the last level in here. In this case, level two, you get the physical address page. All right. The level one, the level one, it just point to the next table. It doesn't, it's not pointing to an actual data page, but it points to the next table. All right. So is it more clear? Basically, you go next table, next table, next table, next table, until you're at the end, that's when you point to the physical page. And then the virtual page, right? Exactly, yes. It's, it's always going to point to the second level. Uh, I don't want to say no matter what, because in reality, there are like different designs that we can do where some level can point to the bigger page as well. We call this huge page, but for now, for now, yes, for now, yes. For the purpose of this level of the class, like a sophomore computer science class, yes. For the more graduate level. There are different designs that we can propose because we are all engineer and computer scientists. We always change the design to make things faster. All right. Mm, so one more thing I have to mention. This part, this part we call this the virtual page number. We call this a virtual page number. We are not going to do anything with the virtual page number in this lecture. We will do something with the virtual page number in the next lecture. In the next lecture. Okay, so is it more clear now? Basically, your physical address, sorry about the mess I did at the bottom. Your physical address, you take the last level and plug them in. All right. So, hopefully, this is like, a much easier entry into virtual address and virtual address translation. Personally, I got so confused when I took this class and when I went through this for the first time. I think I think this is a simpler way to explain. I think this is a much simpler way to explain than the class I took at CMU. All right. Conceptually, this is how you do it. Conceptually, this is how you do it. I will do an in-class exercise next week that have a more realistic example on how this is done. All right. So next week, hopefully you're looking forward to that. There'll be more realistic example of how this is done. So in terms of performance overhead, right, this is where things turn south really quickly. Your page table is in DRAM. Hopefully you all remember DRAM are slow, right? DRAM are slow. You want to stay in the cache, right? So if you have, right now your machine are all 64 bit machine. There are four level of the page table. So to get your physical address, let's say you do this, int star i, and you want to access the value, how many DRAM access you have to do? Five, right? You start from virtual address, you go to level one, then level two, then level three, then level four. That's one access, two access, three access, four access. That's when you get the physical address and your fifth access is to your data, right? This is kind of slow. Is this bad? So if we don't do anything with this, is this bad?
I mean, back to the point that we are wondering why do we have to go through this uh, process to enabling all this potentially the benefit of virtual memory, right? Because it's gonna slow down your computer quite a lot. So hopefully, yeah, it's like n multiplied, but it's multiplied by five. It's not like power of five, power of five. That's way too bad, right? But the performance overhead is quite big, right? So this is the motivation behind next lecture. We'll talk about how we can design the system to make sure this is not the problem, right? Because you have four level of the page table to get the address. You cannot access DRAM. You cannot access DRAM without knowing the physical address. The second problem that actually might make things even worse. Remember our caching lecture. So to use the cache, you need what? You need the tag bits. You need the index bit, right? And you need the byte in block bit. Where the where do I get these three bits? Uh, three three pieces of information. Remember where do I get it? I need it from the address, right? I need it from the address. The address can be in the form of virtual address or physical address, right? Are you with me so far? When I went through the caching lecture, I never tell you, is that a virtual address or is that a physical address? Let me ask you this question. Actually, in reality, some of them are coming from the physical address some of them are from the virtual address, right? So this part is from the page offset. It's there in both virtual address and physical address, all right? But, but the problem is this. Can I have virtual address VA1 from program one and VA2 from program two where Apparently, they have the same virtual address, the exact same virtual address, but two different programs. What would happen to the tag bits if I use the virtual address? They're going to overlap. And can you tell me, is that program one's data or program two data? Nope, I cannot tell because they have the same virtual address. So the tag bit has to come from the physical address. I need the physical address for the tag bits. So what does this mean? If I need the physical address to access the cache, what does this mean? How many times do I have to go to DRAM before I can even access the cache? How many times do I have to go to DRAM to get my physical address? Four, yes. So this means that to access the cache, you have four DRAM access. And if it's a cache head, then it's like one cache head. Again, this is bad, right? This is bad. Next week, next week, we will talk about how can we improve this, all right? We're gonna have uh, a, a additional component that every single computer, every single computer has them to make sure this never happened because every single computer use virtual memory. The benefit is clear. We need to actually architect and design your ship such that you don't run into this problem or at least minimize page walk. All right, so before we leave today again, uh, we'll be on the Discord session. In the Discord session, we still have in class, I mean, let's just put it one to 11. <laughs> In class one to eleven, I mean, focus on in class ten and eleven. If you haven't done in the earlier in class, this is best. Uh, is a great time to do. As well as assignment 
3, which is now due next Thursday. But if you have late day, if you have late day left, this become Friday. All right. So that's it for uh, today's lecture portion. Uh, I hope you get basically how a uh, virtual address translation work. Uh, let me uh, begin to stop the recording so I can put that on YouTube that you can watch later.